G'day, my name is Mike Goldman. Welcome to On The Mic. This is the travelling bushman from Crocodile Encounters, a.k.a. Mark Jackowitz. Welcome to On The Mic. G'day, Mike. How are you? This is terrifying. This is nerve-wracking. This is the scariest episode of On The Mic that I have ever done really? in the five years that this show has happened. Although, Gwetta Kaleem was a bit sketchy, but... This comes a close second. Can I just say, it's an absolute honour to be sitting here talking to you. I've literally grown up with you, either watching you on TV or listening to you on the radio. I mean, we're talking way back Wednesday, it was it 91, 92, I used to listen to you on a local radio station on the Central Coast, where you were that funny back then. I mean, that's a gift. I'd have to either walk away from the TV or the radio set, because I was crying you'd be that funny. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I oh, miss... Oh, wow, really? I, yeah, yeah, you were that funny. And I miss the days of Big Brother Up Late where you'd get a prop, where, whether it was a blow-up kangaroo, and you just have fun with it. And, I, you know, that's a gift you should that never That was my co-host. Lose. I miss that. Yeah, I did so. too. Thank you. That's really <laughs> nice of you to say that. I, I remember the days of Coast Rock FM. I got fired for calling it Roast Cock FM <laughs> and doing shows in the nude. Uh, so clearly the only way I can not get fired is have my own show. I'm so glad I didn't see that as a 10-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some photos I'll show you later. But you've got something else to show us. I uh, I'm going I'm to talk to you throughout the show and find out a lot about you because you've done some incredible things in your career with animals. I mean, you've worked at Australia Zoo for a while. You're even fired from there. I want to know what happened there. <coughs> yeah, okay. you bet, but, you know, fast forward years and years later, um, after working there with Steve Irwin and, and working with so many other people in, in the animal world and animals in the animal kingdom... You've got some incredible stories to tell, including a near-death experience just recently where you got bitten by a black snake. Yeah, I was, I've got a Facebook page called Travelling Bushman where I do, wherever I go with Crocodile Encounters, I do educational uploads on all kinds of things. And I was standing in a bit of mushy water, lifted my heel up, my heel got stuck in the mud and I got nailed on the heel by a red-bellied black snake. So at this stage... You didn't I, even know it was there. I didn't know, I yeah. didn't know. So, I mean, I've been working with wildlife for... 20, 25 years, the first time I've ever been bitten by a venomous snake. I didn't know what it was. So I thought, okay, I'll just go back to my car. Now, I was at a place called Jillaby where no reception out there. I know, Jillaby. Yeah, beautiful Mate of mine, a uh, few mates live there. Yeah. Justin Smith. Well, where that old uh, Bennett Primary School is. Yeah. That's where I got bitten. So I had started to head back to the car thinking, was it a yabby? Because those things can get pretty big. A yabby. So I thought, Yabbies mm. can't kill you. Well, at this stage, I didn't know. So I went to the car. I thought, I'll just go to Wild um, Hospital, hospital just, yeah. just to make sure. Within about not even 20 seconds, I started getting these serious searing headaches, like the worst hangover f I felt ever. And I thought, poo's hitting the fan. This is getting serious. So I went from 60 kilometers. What's hitting the fan? Poo's hitting the fan. This but is you getting can say serious. shit. Oh, okay. Just then, say internet. I didn't think I so could say shit, what, but anyway. Say whatever you want. I thought, Shit's hitting the fan here. This is getting serious. Mm. I went from 60Ks to 120Ks. My vision started to get blurry. I was sweating like I've never sweated before. Sweaty palms. All the symptoms, all the symptoms of a venomous snake. So by the time I got to Wyong Hospital and laid down, I was dry reaching, sweating. And he said, oh, it's possible you've had a dry bite. And I said, mate, there's no way I've had a dry bite. A dry bite. What's a dry bite? Dry bite's when a venomous snake bites you and it doesn't envenomate. So I said, there's no way I've been bitten by, I had a, a dry bite. There's, yeah. no, there's no way. Yeah. So he said, oh, for the symptoms, you've either been bitten by a red-bellied black snake or a tiger snake. What, what were your symptoms? Uh, itchy palms, throwing up, sweating like I've never sweated before. <laughs> That's not a dry bite. There's some so venom in you, baby. I'm thinking, if this is a tiger snake, this could get serious. Because mm. they're the fourth most venomous snake in the world. Yeah. So I did the blood test. The but blood black snake's worse, isn't it? Well, no, the red-bellied black snake, they're like... The Labrador venomous snakes. Uh, on record, the records go back to the late 1800s. The Labrador of venomous no snakes. No one's ever died. What are they, so fart they if you feed them too much pow? <laughs> what would you call it, the, the Labrador of no, venomous snakes? No, but I've snakes. now found out they do get pissed off when you stand on them. Yeah, so that is true. So blood tests, I was in, hos in hospital for 24 hours. The yeah. blood test came back, possibly a red belly black snake, but they weren't 110% sure. Yeah. Um, it was been three weeks of torturing hell. Locked jaw, couldn't put my arms above my head. Oh, wow. Um, I'd stand up to do the dishes, collapse back on my feet. Because uh, when you're bitten by a venomous snake, it travels, travels through your lymphatic system. So it affected my central nervous system, um, hallucinations. The worst, Was there a moment where you thought, this is it? The worst part about that is travelling back from Jillaby. There's mm. no phone reception. 
and knowing that I've been bitten by something venomous, whether it be a oh, so you couldn't snake. call an ambulance. No, it was no exception. There was um, I'm thinking I've either been bitten by a venomous snake or a funnel web. Just having that little split moment where you think, because I've got two boys, do I have to send a video to them just in case that that was I've been through all really bad situations. No, I didn't, no. but I just thought, no, nah, snap out of it. So you've got to have that in the back of your mind when you're working with dangerous animals all the time. I mean. You, you, you've got a, a, a dangerous line of work that you've chosen, a dangerous career. I mean, Steve Irwin didn't think he was going to be killed by a, um, a stingray, of all things. I know, I know. I mean, you know what? It's more dangerous because I probably do about, with crocodile encounters, I'd probably do <coughs> 80,000 kilometres a year. It's more dangerous to me driving on the road, mm. going from place to place than doing what I do because we yeah. don't do venomous animals in our shows. Having said, I mean, I used to work with big, big male crocs in the past. It's just having that healthy respect. I mean, yeah, okay, crocodiles are dangerous, but they're not as dangerous as other animals. As long as you've got that healthy respect, it's it's just about common sense. Is that how you got into this? But for your love of crocodiles, what what drew you to working with animals? Way back Wednesday, we go ninety four when Steve Owen was first starting out in TV when mm. he wasn't this big, massive person like he is now. Yeah, rest in peace, mate. Um, that's that's the line of work that I wanted to be, and I reckon not because of him. Yeah, yeah. There's like kids seeing Michael Jackson perform. Go, I want to be a singer. Yeah, yeah. Probably not so much anymore. So, um, yeah, but ninety four, ninety five, and I remember one time when I was at school, high school, the teacher said, "What do you want to be?" To little Johnny, I want to be a footballer. What do you want to be? I said, "I want to work the crocodiles," and you know, did TV production. Everyone's laughed and said, "Ha ha ha! That'll never happen." Oh, yeah. So, anyway. And you did. Look at you going. And I did, yeah. So, um, following your dreams. It's great. And that's right. It's, it's, I get a lot of enjoyment out of this. When did you handle your first crocodile? <sighs> At 19 years of age. I mean, I've worked from Crocodiles Park to Darwin, Johnson River Crocodile Farm, um, all in tourism. So it's Crocodile uh, farms for making them for food? They make them for food and... But I was more interested in the tourism side of things and the mm. breeding side of, side of things. Mm. So the best way to get hands-on experience if you want to go down the that place industry. where there's a, a lot of crocodiles where they handle them. I mean, how, yeah. how are places like Australia Zoo with crocodile farms? And someone coming Australia from Australia Zoo farm? isn't big on crocodile farms. Yeah, they'd be against them, I guess. I mean, they're, they're totally and only against them. Where for me, the only way I could get hands-on experience is you're not going to you're not going to get paid hands-on experience working at any zoo or any any mm. animal park. Go straight. If you want hands-on experience, if you want to see crocodiles breed mm. and see how they act in breeding season, bang, straight up to a crocodile farm. And it was, for me, the best learning experience. You get bitten by one ever? Once. Whereabouts? I uh, got bitten on the hand. I got nailed there, there by 1.25 metre croc about 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, a couple of scars there. I had a few to drink and I just thought... Mm, you don't deal with <laughs> crocodiles when you've had a few to drink. Well, look at American cousins. <laughs> if you've got an American <laughs> cousin that works with... Cro that, you know, hat comes from over here and works with crocodiles. I thought, oh, I'll video it. So I've got a video on one hand, finished the JD, picked up the croc by the tail and stupid me. So. You're a bit loose around animals, aren't you? A little bit. So. That, that, that <laughs> makes me a bit uneasy right now. I don't know about Morgan and Carly here from Picture Sound, Sound Kitchen. They're probably freaking out right now. Though. I'm going to have some fun with you. Well, what, what do you want to bring out? Oh, what, okay. what, what, do you, what do you want to start with? Are we, are we going to start with cute and cuddly or are we going to just go for something big and long and scary? He's reaching into his big box right now and oh, now okay. he has what looks like a pillowcase. So with working with crocodile encounters, my job isn't to scare or intimidate you. My job is to educate you on how important their wildlife is. If I yeah. go in there and scare you, yeah. that's, it's, it's not, that's not my mission. No, I don't get scared. What do you reckon is in the back? Uh, in the bag, yep. uh, it I, looks like a snake right snake. now. What kind of snake? Uh, I think it's a diamond python. Diamond python. You're about to find out that life is full of disappointments and you're wrong. Anyway, here we go. Ready? <gasps> oh, blue tongue lizard. That's all right. Is the blue tongue lizard? Yes. This is called a blue tongue lizard. They're, they're not poisonous, not, though. No, 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 mate. Oh, really? There I, you go. Oh, oh it's, it's gripping onto my hand. Ah, oh, okay. It's going to be a little Am I holding it properly? No, so I don't want it to snap back and bite me. Nah, mate, it's not going to bite you. It's not going to bite me? No, no. This is like a full proper pet one. That's right. Oh my God, no, I these guys one. can live up to 30 to 40 years in the wild. And they're called the blue tongue lizard because, bam, they got a blue tongue. Oh. Now, when our Australian wildlife is discovered, they name the really cool name. If I see a lizard with a blue tongue, yeah. blue tongue lizard, green frog up in a tree, green tree frog, or a black snake with a red belly, red belly black snake. So this is how they name our Australian wildlife. It's quite placid. Did you give it some, like, animal Panadol or something? No, but you know what they do like to do? They like to give kisses on the cheek. They do not. They do. Dude. Watch. 
Hang on, say it, ready? Oh, come on. He, Your turn. Are you serious? Yep, ready? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what about what about on the mouth? No. <laughs> Please don't give oh. my lizard infectious diseases. That, that's that's fully <laughs> thanks. That's, <laughs> it was fully getting its tongue out when you when you're going up close to it. Yeah. So how long had this guy for? Oh uh, well, I've been with crocodile encounters now for two years. I'm not quite sure how old she is. Now, you, how do you tell if these guys are male or female? Really simple. Males have Girl. a big fat head and a little body. Females have a little body and a big fat belly. So this is a female, and do you I know what tell. her name is? She's pretty. Her name's Bobby. Hello, now, Bobby. You know one of the things that kills these guys out in the wild? Uh, magpies. No. What do What do you reckon these guys like to eat? They like to eat snails. But what do snails like to eat? Snails like to eat have flowers and a veggie gardens. Mm. So people get really cranky when that happens. So we put a thing called snail bait out. Now snail oh. bait's really bad because this little guy will eat the snail that has eaten the snail bait. And die. You've had this had a thirty to forty year old reptile that has died. Mm. So this is why we've got to be really careful and really mindful about the poisons and pesticides we put in our backyards. Yeah, that's good. So okay? um, if you see one of these in the backyard, can you just pick it up and go, "Hey, I got a new pet." If you pick one of these up in the backyard, chances it's going to bite you, and chances are it's going to hurt. They're not a venomous animal, but it's going to hurt. Now, what they do for a defense Beautiful. mechanism is being a blue-tongued lizard, you'll stick a head out, stick a tongue out, yeah. and say, look how big, look how tough I am. If you touch me, I'm going to bite. Mm. So chances are if you see these guys in the wild, or oh. sorry, in the backyard, leave them alone. If you see them in the backyard, they're a really, really good pest management. Now, these blue-tongued lizards... Some reptiles have live babies. Other reptiles have eggs. Mm. This little one, she'll lay live babies, and she'll lay up to, up to uh, 25 to 30 babies once a year. 30 babies? Yeah. So, so I've got a couple of, I've seen around the yard at my place. So, I mean, they're laying eggs around the place, and eventually it's going to be like 30. No, no eggs. She won't lay eggs. She'll have live babies. So, oh, just pump out the babies. Yep. So when she has 25 to live babies, that's it. Mum's done. Ski. She's now going to go for a hole and out the dream world. Uh, Dad did the nitty-gritty with the mum about five months ago. Kids, please don't ask me about that. Ask your parents, but they're not interested in each other at all. So cute. And so, wh where do you just keep this in a in a container at the uh, crocodile encounters area, or, or where where does she live? She lives in a big enclosure back at our facility. So, um, and she's got she, she got a mate, or she got any friends to hang out with during the day. Thing is, with blue tongues, is you really do need, in my opinion, you need to keep them separate because they are territorial. And they will beat each other up. It's not. It's quite common to see males have got missing bits of tail, missing bits of leg, because males are really territorial, and they've got several females within a fifteen house perimeter block, mm. and he will defend those with his life. So cold. She's now. These guys need a temperature of around about twenty eight, twenty nine degrees mm. for them to be active. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you take this to schools, the kids must freak out. They must think it's awesome. You know what? Kids love them. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. Back in your bag. Bobby bye. will return. Oh, that's so cool. Now, um, that's that's obviously the cutest and cuddliest animal you have. Okay. Uh, but there are, there are a few boxes that you have here, so uh, I'm a little bit uh, worried about, this, especially the uh, the creepy crawly ones. This looks like, surely this is a snake. No, it as he reaches into his next pillowcase. Uh -oh. Yeah, so again, do you like Ninja Turtles? I love Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. I like Ninja Turtles too. I like the 1990s Ninja Turtles. That's how truly old I am. The, the, the older Ninja Turtles are better. The, oh, the yeah, cartoon yeah. ones. The, the arcade the, games The original awesome. ones. Yeah, who was that? Donatello. Michelangelo. Uh, Leonardo. Leonardo. Uh, Splinter was the... The was rat? Was Splinter the bad guy? Splinter was a rat and it was a shredder. Shredder was the bad... Oh, look at this little turtle. So, this oh, little glider... he in there. He's scared. <laughs> this oh. little glider is called... Here she comes, sweetheart. This little glider is called an Eastern Long Neck Freshwater Turtle. Now in Australia, oh, yeah. you want to hold it? Yeah, go yeah, okay. Yeah, when you hold it. Oh, oh careful, these sweetheart. Little claws got stuck. When you hold it, hold it like it's a hamburger. Like, Arr, <laughs> don't actually bite it, you'll break your teeth. Or <laughs> hold it like it's a wee Swiss bag air. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa. Hello. Let's now, yeah, so this is an Eastern Long Neck Freshwater Turtle. In Australia, we have 23 species of freshwater turtle. Half those species are on the endangered list due to foxes. Foxes cause around about 90% of freshwater turtle destruction. Now, what will happen is certain freshwater turtle species, when she lays her eggs, they can take 12 months, a whole year, for those eggs to hatch out and incubate. Meanwhile, the fox will go to the next nest and go to the next nest and destroy an entire ecosystem. Now, what makes it even worse is in the late 1800s, there was an introduced fish called mosquito fish. Now, mosquito fish were brought over here to North America. In the late 1800s, you get rid of mosquito larvae. Yeah. Here's the problem. Mosquito fish... 
are eating these guys' habitat, so they're being pushed out. Then we go to frogs. Mosquito fish are eating the tadpoles, so the frogs can't reproduce. Then we go to land. What do red belly black snakes love to eat? They love to eat frogs. So this is one of the reasons why Australia holds one of the highest rates of wildlife extinction with around 60 to 70% of threatened species. Do we really? I never yes. knew that. Yeah, it's really, oh, really it, bad. It is, is it just because of the uh, amount of different species we've brought from other countries? Or yep. what, what, oh, is it pollution? Pretty much. I mean, what, what's the main we've problem? got 27 introduced species of bird alone. Hmm. It's just that bad. I like cane toads and rabbits and <laughs> it's, stuff like that. It's an uphill battle that I we're fighting to lose, and it's really disappointing. I mean, but there are strategies and places to try and prevent that. Does he bite? No, he doesn't bite. You can sell hey. all of them if you want. Oh. So do you know what his shell is made out of? Tortoise shell. <laughs> now, do you know? Do you know what the difference is between a turtle and a tortoise? Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's a turtle. Yeah. So, so turtles come from Australia. Yeah. Tortoises come from overseas. Turtles live in water. Tortoises live on land. Yeah. So, you know what this guy's shell is made out of? No. Same thing as our fingernails. Keratin. Keratin. Oh, Keratin oh, wow. and hair. Yeah. That's incredible. These guys can actually breathe underwater. Yeah. But they don't have gills. You know how? She can, she can hold the pocket of air through her backside, through her bum. Which she means can she what? hold the pocket of hold air through her air backside. In her, in her ass. Yeah, in her well, ass. Gives me meaning to blow it out of <laughs> your ass. So, um. <laughs> Still laughing at my jokes. No wonder he listened to my show. That's anyway. cool, dude. That's cool. There so, what'll that's, happen that's is turtle. she's an ambush predator. So, what she'll do, she'll dive down and she'll wait. She'll wait for that freshwater fish to go past and she'll whack. She'll stretch it out 15 to 16 centimeters long, bite that prey, and that's how she's an ambush predator. There is two other things that's killing these guys out in the wild. It's usually cars. It's uh, cars, usually holding drivers with Chevy badges on. Duh, you hick. It's a common on on a Chevy. They'll be driving and they'll run these guys over. Now, I travel New South Wales with crocodile and cattle doing shows. This is one of the most common things I see on the road. A car will run this over. Now, because turtles are cold-blooded, they can slow their heart rate down. It may take days, if not weeks, for them to die. I've seen cars purposely hit these guys. Mm. Really? Another thing, plastics in our waterways. This yeah. little one will swim in a plastic bag. She'll end up drowning. Then that plastic bag will go to the ocean. And if we keep on, keep on going down this road, I mean, we're going to have more plastics in our ocean. Go to ban anyway. plastic bags. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, isn't it, New South Wales has just banned them just recently? Just recently, yeah. yeah. What I've seen Queensland, is, close second. I think it's happening soon. Yeah. What I've seen is I've seen you can get a piece of plastic around her shell. Yeah. That plastic might take 200 years for it to break down. Oh, man. So the bigger she gets, her shell will warp and form around that piece of plastic. And she'll end up choking. And it. straws as well. Yes. Like if you if you get a straw in a cafe, send it back. Say you don't want it, and 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 send them a YouTube video of that that poor turtle getting the straw pulled out of its nose. Have you seen that? I have. That's and, you know what yeah. I used to be a volu- I used to be with a volunteer organisation <laughs> where we, where we used to do I used to do um, rescue seabirds and all kinds of marine life. Plastics, fishing hooks, fishing line is, if not a daily, weekly occurrence. Mm. Um, one of the biggest things I used to rescue is pelicans all the time. Yeah. If it wasn't plastics, it was botulism. If it wasn't botulism, it was the list goes on. Pla- plastics from like a plastic bag, they eat it by accident. Yeah. Yep. They still think it's a fish or something, do and they? Then, yeah. The worst part about that is, I mean, we've all let a silicon hel- helium balloon go. We've, we've all done it. The worst part about that is the silicon helium balloons, when you let them go, they go up to around about 27,000, 28,000 feet because of the atmosphere and the cold. They explode. When they explode, they shred and they look like a jellyfish. Then they go back down to the ocean. Then you'll get a hawksbill turtle, dolphins that will consume this and they'll end up dying. So I never knew that. Don't, don't, really? Don't let your balloon go up into the don't atmosphere the because it'll go. come down and an animal will use it for a jellyfish. Now, That's these up, silicon helium balloons, uh, they might, they're biodegradable in fresh water, but they're not biodegradable in salt water. Right. So don't let your helium balloon go in the ocean. That's good advice. Would you like to see another animal? Definitely. Yeah. How cool. many animals do you have? Surprise! <laughs> this is so cool, Mark. Awesome. Right, okay. So we've, so we've already, we had the, uh, the turtle. And now we're going to have uh, what looks like probably, uh, I keep thinking snake. I don't know why. Cause I, why and why do you keep them in, in like pillowcases? Like With this? reptiles is when you put them in pillowcases, they go to sleep. Oh, do they? How come? Well, they don't die. They just go to sleep and they just come down. What, so do they think it's a belly or something and they've no, been they eaten and they come, give up? No, they just come right down. Oh, okay. Anyway, here we go. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. <laughs> what is that? What is that thing? Have a guess. It's in the same family as a blue tongue lizard. Looks like, it looks like a pine cone. It does look like a pine cone. A lot and, of people and it looks like he's got two heads, one at both ends of his body. 
This is called a shingle back lizard. Oh, you want to hold? Touch it. Can I hold? Of course it? you can. Is, okay. The beauty about because oh. um, I work for Crocodile Encounter, so we do. We're not a zoo or a wildlife park. We do educational birthdays, agriculture shows, and the beauty about this is it's all a hands-on experience, not just for kids, but for adults as well. Now I love these guys. They're so awesome. With animals in the wild, it's either eat or be eaten. You got to survive. So when a feral animal comes, she'll put her head to a tail. A feral animal will think that's its head. She'll bite that tail and that tail will come off. And it'll take about 12 months for that uh, tail to grow back. Now these guys are also have live babies, so she won't lay eggs. So she'll have two to three live babies yeah. every second year. Yeah. Now this is what I love. This is kind of romantic. Males and females, they hate each other, but the same male and the same female will meet up every second year for breeding season. Every second year, yes. they find each other. The yes. same one. Same one. After two years. That's incredible. How do Absolutely they remember incredible. each other after two years? No idea. I can't remember ex-girlfriends after a few weeks. Oh, God, I can't. Oh, that's, that's not true. <laughs> well, he's, oh, he's losing his um. Yeah, so just like, just like snakes, skin. she will shed, but she won't shed in one whole bit. She'll shed in, in little bits. Now, there you go. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas for you. Oh, you've, now, do you know me, what's you've given on? me some skin. Thank you very much. I'll tell you, there's some really interesting uh, facts about skin in a minute. Mm. Going on snakes. Now, do you know what's killing these guys in the wild? What's killing these guys? We got... As I said before, Australia holds one of the highest rates of wildlife extinction with around 60 to 70% of threatened mm. species. So we've got feral cats, feral dogs, not dingoes. Dingoes are native to this country, okay? Uh, so what's been done about it? There is an organisation called Bush Heritage. And what Bush Heritage... You can hold that if you want. What Bush Heritage are doing is they're putting up huge fences for hundreds and hundreds, and hundreds of kilometres and they're putting these guys back in the wild. Well, I think that's a fantastic idea. And oh, she, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So she does look like a pine, pine cone... Just to defend herself in the wild. But she doesn't seem like, it seems so placid. I can't believe that she, she's not going crazy. Yeah, well, because I mean, we use these for shows all the time, a lot of people say, oh, it's, the most common thing I get asked is, do these animals bite? And I said, look, do you have a cat or dog? Yeah, I do. Okay, we handle these animals every single day. Oh, okay. Just like a cat or a dog, if you were to have a cat or a dog, not touch it for six months, then go and pick it up, it'll bite you. The exact same with these animals. Do, do you, do you uh, cop a bit of flack from like animal liberationists saying, you know, it's cruel being cruel to animals and carrying around No, all the time? not really. Sometimes I've, I've had a couple of criticisms from vegans, but, you know. Well, the vegans are complaining all over the shop right now. Did you see the other day in Melbourne, they shut down the whole, stri the whole city? Yeah. For people trying to get to work. We're all allowed uh, to I understand what they're there. saying, though. You know, we, we do treat animals quite badly in yeah. Australia. We need to sort that out. But we won't go into that right now because we've got more animals. More <laughs> animals. And uh, if you want to look him up online, look Mark up at the Travelling Bushman. He's got a Facebook page. Uh, or Crocodile Encounters if you want to have him uh, come out to your school, do a little bit of a show, and you can meet all of these fabulous animals and maybe some of the skin will, will fall off them and you can take it home like... Oh, no, that's not, that's not looking good. Okay, what, so what is I've that thing? I've got a Facebook page um, called Travelling Bushman where I do educational uploads and I do all kinds of things. And I'm trying to really get, I'm trying really hard to get up to 3,000 followers. So if you get a chance, go on your Facebook page, look up Travelling Bushman. I'd really appreciate it. And if you'd like to book a show with Crocodile Encounters, um, inbox me or inbox Crocodile Encounters. So this one. And you need your own TV show. That's what you need. You, you need to be the next Steve Irwin. Well, there's a, there's a spot that needs to be filled, and I think this is the guy. Okay, I wouldn't go that far, but oh, oh crap. Okay. Oh man. Here we go. Oh no. If you think I wasn't nervous, you'd be wrong. How many spiders do you think we have in Australia? Ten thousand. No, a little bit lower. We've got over around about two thousand species of spider. Yeah. All of which are venomous. Australia's in Sydney, we've got a spider called the Sydney funnel web. Now, before 1982, mm. if you were bitten by this spider, lights out. Dead. They didn't have any antivenom. Uh, the before 1982? Would, yep. The People doctors just died after they, being bitten The doctors by the put a drip web. in your arm and they go, what do we do now? Ugh. This little one is called a Flinders Ranges bird eating spider. Man. Now, Sydney funnel webs can't climb glass, can't climb plastic, but this little girl here, well, we go there. Don't spill it on me, dude. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Now, do you want to hold it? No. Now, no, I don't. this bird in spider of this tarantula, Morgan, Morgan loves these. she can climb glass and she can climb plastic. And Morgan she will... Come <laughs> on, it's all right. She's filming, filming the show. Just have a look oh at the God. spider. Like, no, I look at it's all right. Just sit down. I'm it's not okay. going to scare you. Just relax, okay? Now, I'm not going to lie. 
these do intimidate me. If you were to get this spider on my hand, you would see a poo line trail at that oh, door. Yeah. Okay? So. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm like looking right at you. Your job's more terrifying, terrifying than my job. Do you want to hold? No, no, Here, mate. No, 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 no. Just a spider. She said to me before you got here, please, I'm, not, I'm just going to set the cameras up and I'm going to go outside the studio at Picture Sound and, I, and I'm not, I'm not going to be in there. But she changed her mind at the last minute. So, and that is the thing that she's most scared of. Now, these she's faced her fears. She's done well. Now, these females, are, they can live up to 30 years in the wild. But just be careful because she can climb up that glass. Sorry, she can climb up that plastic. These females, are, they can live up to 30 years in the wild and they're nocturnal. Nocturnal means sleep in the daytime, come out at night. Well, she's awake now. Yeah, that's she's got for sure. a burrow. And around this burrow, she's got, just pretend this is a burrow. And at the opening of this burrow, she's got tripwires. And around these tripwires, you'll get an insect or an invertebrate that, an, or an invertebrate that will trip that tripwire. She will explode out of that burrow, bite that prey, drag it back down into the burrow. And this is where it gets interesting. When she drags it back down into the burrow, she'll pulp that victim, whether it be a mouse or a lizard or a cricket. She'll pulp it. Okay, then she'll envenomate that little mouse. Then everything inside, lungs, heart, tissue, everything will turn into mush and she'll suck the nutrients out of that victim. There you go. There's your spider back, mate. Oh, man, that freaks me out. I, um, I interviewed a guy from the Australian Museum in, uh, in Brisbane. Yep. And he's been studying spiders for the last 20 years. And some of the stuff he told me about, about spiders was crazy. Like, that, it's a very Game of Thrones. A lot of the way they have the babies and that. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's one of the sons has sex with the mother to make more babies and random <laughs> crap like that. And uh, there's a spider, I think it's in the Amazon. If it bites you, you get an erection for like three days. Hey! <laughs> you know about that one? No! Bizarre. The Viagra so spider. The, she is pretty vicious when she comes to mating. When she mates with a male, more often than not, then after she mates and gets an own, then she'll eat and consume the male. So she won't show him any mercy. Now, in spider terms, every spider in the world is venomous. Every single spider, just some more venomous than others. Now, she will get a lot bigger than this. She'll get about the size of my hand, which is pretty cool. Really? Yes, but... The bigger, people keep these as pets. People, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned that too. This is the thing that I love. Back when you and I were kids, how old are you? 46. Oh, bastard. No. <laughs> How old are you? 38. 38. So, you, you, you look good. Uh, thank you. You must use oil of LA or something. Shh, don't tell anyone. Or keeping yourself scared with all these animals. <laughs> now, Keeps you young. this is what I love. When you and I were kids, what could we get at the pet shop? Goldfish, and that was it. Times are changing. We can get these bird-eating spiders. We can get stick insects, Flinders Ranger scorpions, um, a list of insects that you couldn't get 20, 30 years ago. And I love how times are changing because mm. I think it's really unfortunate. Back in the day where you and I were kids mm. and we used to go down to the fish pond and fish out for goldfish, mm. not goldfish, tadpoles. I think that, that day and age is gone. But I love how this era is starting to come back. I love it. Yeah, because I think people will respect animals a lot more. If you, yeah. can, if you can have a pig or a goat or a, you know, what you, whatever that is, a bird-eating spider... So it obviously doesn't eat a bird whole. It just like puts a massive net there and catches it and, oh, and like e eats it bit by bit. My Does it stay, the bird stay alive, eats a wing. I'll come back later. No, they'll end up dying. Yeah. So things yeah. die. Yeah, that things happens. Die. All right. Okay. Buy a little spider. Is he got a name? She got a name. Barry. Barry. She's her I name. I just made that up. I don't her, know. Her, her name's Barry. Okay. okay. Well, I got through that okay. I, I was a little bit freaked out about the whole spider thing. Is that the only spider you brought in? Please say yes. No. It's oh, a, yes, it is. oh, yeah, it is. Thank God. Okay. I, I heard some weird stat that there's apparently uh, something like 10,000 spiders for every 100 metres squared in Australia. Could that I be right? I heard that. I did hear that. Okay. Now we've got Ugh. something a little bit more friendly. Don't freak out. Oh, man. A little All bit more right, friendly. Okay. But you, you pulled out this plastic box. Where with, are with you? A bit Where of apple are in you, it. sweetheart? She's hiding. I is this is this a, the uh, the burrowing cockroach? I've got a burrowing cockroach in here. It's escaped. It's not even in there. <laughs> You've lost your pet. <laughs> Where'd it go? Where's your burrowing cockroach go? <laughs> it's burrowed its way out. It's lost an animal. There's an animal somewhere in the studio. Oh, and so somewhere in your car is. A borrowing cockroach. 
Uh, where, where are you going to find your, your next burrowing cockroach? Oh. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? All right, how Just, many species of snake do you think we have in Australia? How many species of snake? Yes. If you get this right, 15. You get, if you get this right, you get 50 bucks, you get two goes. 38. Keep going. Oh, okay. 150. Am I close? Close, but no cigar. Yeah, okay. I get to keep that 50 bucks. In Australia, we have over 120 species of snake. Oh, it's close. 100 of those are venomous, and we hold 20 species of python. Oh, diamond python? Yes. I used to have one of these as a pet. Did I love really? these. There yes. You go. Oh, okay. This little one is called Marilia Spilotus. Marilia oh. Spilotus Spilotus or a diamond python. So beautiful. Now, diamond pythons are really Goodbye common too. throughout Wollongong, Sydney, Central Coast, and Newcastle, but due to habitat loss, they're being pushed <coughs> out. And it's very, very important you treat a snake like because it's venomous. You know why? Because they still bite you. Well, yeah, but not only that, you know, there is a snake in Sydney called the broad-headed snake. It's about 30 to 60 centimetres long. It's highly endangered and it's highly venomous, but it looks like that. Mm. So, oh, really? It looks oh, exactly yeah. like that? Really? S same colours. Oh, okay. So, so just go same colours, a little bit of a change of a head, but same colours. So it's oh, very, very beautiful. important. You see a snake in the wild, you treat it like it's venomous. I love this snake. They're cool. So They're is it legal so to keep these? Uh, what you've got to do is if you want to keep this privately, then you've got to keep... You've got to get a license. You've got to get a license, yeah. That's, mm. that's mandatory. You are not allowed to keep any wildlife without a license because it is highly illegal. Why is it illegal? I mean, this, this seems like a, a, a friendly little pet that you could just have around the house. It doesn't look like it's going to hurt me. And like the lizards as well. Do you need a, a license to keep those for all, Yeah, for all reptiles, you do need a, li oh, okay. you do need a license. I thought maybe you could just keep the lizard as a pet. No, no. But no. Oh, you need a license for them need too. Need a license, yeah. Does it cost a lot to get a license? I, I yeah, get... I'm not quite sure. I think it costs about 120 or something like that. I'm not quite oh, sure. That's all right. Yeah. All right, so a lot of people do know this, but, you know, these guys don't have legs, arms, fingers, or toes. So how do they eat their food? Well, they're constrictors. So what you'll do is I'll put this back around your neck again. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. All right. What she'll do, what she'll do, <laughs> is if you're a bat, she'll whack, she'll bite this animal on the head, and she'll chuck a coil around you. Like this. Let me go. Uh, I, don't get, I don't know about this. Every time this animal struggles, she will get tighter and tighter and tighter till this animal dies of the asphyxiation or suffocates to death, and she'll consume that okay. head first. I didn't mind holding it, but I don't know about my, now, the whole around the neck thing. If you're a bat or a rat, and if you're being consumed, your eyes are going to pop out of your head. You want me to take it off? You're right. Yeah, no, it's okay. Now, it's a nice little necklace. Morgan, you want to go with this? <laughs> no, you don't want to do this. <laughs> now, um, I used to be a wildlife rescuer. I used to oh. get a lot of pythons out of people's oh. houses. A lot of people have got cats. Very, very important. If you've got a cat, keep it locked up at night. Because what will happen is uh. cats are nocturnal. Nocturnal, as I was saying before, they sleep out. They sleep in the day, come out at night. While you're asleep at, in the nighttime, cats are going on a bit of a bender, if you know what I mean. And they're killing a lot of our wildlife. But, and there is a but on this, okay? Yeah. Pythons, our wildlife is fighting back. Pythons actually have now cats on our menu. It's not the first time I've done a wildlife rescue call. I've picked a python up. She's had a massive bit, lump in her belly. I picked it up and she bleh, spewed up a cat with its belly around its neck. So it's very, very important. If you've got a cat or a kitty, um, please keep it locked up. Yeah, because uh, you don't want to lose your cat down the, no. uh, the snake's mouth. Um, this is... Um, so kind of freaking me out here because it's wrapped around my neck. Really? And uh, and I'm thinking it's gonna, gonna you won't be able to get it off. It's gonna. It's not. It's not gonna bite you. You know what? A lot of people say, "Oh, is it gonna bite?" It's all about reading that uh, that animal's like body language. It's just same with snakes, crocodiles, horses. It's all about reading that animal's body language and not being freaked out. How many snakes have you got? I got one more, and I got a big surprise for you at the end. A big surprise. Oh. Big surprise. Oh wow. And so where would you get one of these if you wanted to keep it as a pet? You'd get it from a licensed breeder. So it's illegal for you to catch it out in the wild. Okay. So it's, yes, it is illegal for you to catch it out in the wild. And how much do they cost if you want to borrow one? Oh, mate, I've got no, no idea. Snakes can range from 120 to $5,000. It just depends. How long do they live for? These guys can live up to 20 years in the wild, maybe even more. But they can grow... Close to two and a half metres. I've seen them a little bit bigger than that. In captivity, they last longer? Or, oh, he's it's so funny. <laughs> Gone around my back and down around my leg. I'll get out for you. It's getting out of here. What's to be free? <laughs> and how old is this one? I think 
she's around five years of age, but oh, don't yeah. quote me on that. Yeah, so diamond pythons are very, very common throughout Sydney, Wollongong, Central Coast and Newcastle, but due to habitat loss, they're being pushed out. This is why we need to keep our rainforest. We need to keep our trees because at the end of the day, no tree, no me. Beautiful. But because of all these trees are being pushed out because of our lands being cleared, these are now moving onto people's houses. So people think, oh, I don't want this here. As a matter of fact, pythons are really, really good to have around our house. Why? Because they're an environmentally friendly to have around our house. They eat bats, they eat rats, they eat mice, and they can also make little kittens disappear. Okay, yeah. so these guys, do you know these guys actually have ears? No. Yep, she got an ears, but she doesn't have an eardrum fixture like you or I. She has an inner eardrum fixture just behind her eye. So although she's got an inner eardrum fixture, she can't actually hear like you or me, but she can hear through vibration underneath her jaw that vibrates really, really quick, quickly. Many years ago, scientists, scientists have discovered she can actually hear low frequency sounds. Like a... Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's cool, man. They're pretty cool, though, eh? Oh, I love these Beautiful. things. Beautiful. And how, how big do they grow? Uh, close to two and a half metres. But when you get this high vis yellow, they're usually from the central coast. Such a beautiful colour. Mm, uh, actually, mm. that, that's uh, ex almost exactly the same as the one I had when I was on the central coast. Didn't have a licence, though, a long time ago. Yep. And it got a bit sick. Did it? Um, and someone who had a, a whole stack of these kind of snakes ended up taking it and looking after it for me, nursing it back to health. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So what do they eat live stuff? Do you have to feed them rats? Well, or? yeah... It, when you get your stock, never ever get a live rat and just chuck it in there because it's major, major complications for your snake. Your snake can get bitten, it can lose eyes, it can get bitten, it can get infected. So either bump that live rat rat off or get a f frozen rat. Yeah, put it. So you put the rat in the freezer and it just goes to sleep. Well, I wouldn't do wouldn't do that. But um, oh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, or get frozen rats from the pet shop, oh, pet shop defro okay. defrost them, and um, do it that way. Nice. Okay. Nice to meet you. Oh. Bye, buddy. All right. Have fun back there on the Central Coast. Back into your little bag and have a nap. Everything's going to be okay. We'll have a frozen rat for you soon. <laughs> Maybe even put it in the blender and have a frozen rat Slurpee. Would, that, would they eat that? I don't know. That could, that could be a thing. I think it could... Could be a big All seller right. in the snake community. Uh oh, this one looks a shitload bigger. Now we're now Whatever we're gonna we're gonna up one, all right? Okay, let's up it a little. Okay, so working with the crocodile encounters and on my Facebook page called Traveling Bushman, one of the best, one of the main things that I do, as I was saying earlier, is I educate people, not intimidate them, not scare them. Tell people or tell kids when you, when you see a snake in the backyard, who do you call? Do you call mum or dad? A lot of kids will say, I'll call dad. Well, no, don't call dad. Dad will get a shovel and kill it. Mm. This is how people die. Mm. You know, every year in Australia, two people die of venomous snake bite. Really? Because dad came out and yep. guns are blazing and yep. tried to kill it. Now, it's two people too many. Now, although that might seem like a lot, in India, 50,000 people a year die of venomous a snake A year? Yeah. In India? Yeah. Now, in 2017, we had no fatalities. In 2018, we had three fatalities. 2019... Mm. No fatalities. Good. That's what we want. Mm. But, I mean, sometimes accidents happen, but it also it does come down to common sense. If we're going for a bushwalk, call someone, let someone know you're there, wear the appropriate shoes, take a brush of bandage, take your mobile phone, take someone with you, use your common sense, because it's always, always preventable. Do you, do you tourniquet a uh, snake bite? If someone no uh, pressure bandage, bit, pressure bandage, just a pressure bandage. Yep. So you, you don't you don't put a uh, you know a belt up your leg a bit further nope. so that the circulation doesn't put it through nope. your body. Pressure bandage, just the a pressure bandage yep. is all you need to do. Now going on that redback spiders, we've all heard of redback spiders. Do you know what to do if you're ever bitten by a redback spider? No. Okay. Panic. No, you don't panic. Okay, first off, redback spiders they can live underneath your. Oh, we should have brought it today. Redback spiders they can live underneath your toilet seat, underneath your child seat restraint in your car, even underneath your bed. Yeah. What do you do if you're bitten by a redback spider? Ice pack on the bite or circle the bite site first. Ice pack on the bite straight to hospital. This is the only time you're going to use an ice pack for that bite. Any other bite, pressure bandage straight to hospital. And you know they use the same venom that was created from funnel web on the redback spider bite. Really? And, and pretty much all venomous spider bites is, whoa, holy hell. Is this another diamond python? No, this is a carpet python. She's from Queensland. This is my little girl. And she's called Ned. That is all. That's a big snake. She, mate, she's that is a big oh, one. Mate, she's gorgeous. How? Oh, oh wow. I she's hope, about. Has she eaten today? Uh, she hasn't eaten in a bit. Eyes. Yeah. It's, it's eyes are like. See its eyes. Like weird. She's actually got to shed Twice. her skin soon. Whoa. In summertime, she'll Can shed her skin. Can you tell that from skin. the eyes? Well, see, see how they're going off foggy. Mm. 
She's not going blind. She's actually going to shed her skin soon. Oh, she, they go, she, the eyes go foggy when yeah. they're about to shed. So she, she'll shed every two to three months in summertime. Oh, but in wintertime, she might not shed it every six can months. Can I touch this one? Or will it? You, mate, oh, you can put it around your neck. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to put that one around my neck. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Oh, man. Uh, uh, it's very big. It's very big. Now, two hands here. Just let it slide through your hands. Okay. There you go. Oh, whoa. You, oh, it's very strong. Just let it slide through your hands. Uh, uh, are you sure that I could... It's not going to bite. Or it's not oh, gonna... I'm enjoying this. <laughs> 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 oh, she didn't like you. You know what she'd do first? B, she'd try and bite get me. away. Oh, no. sorry. If she didn't like you, you know, she'd do a couple of things. A, she'd try and get away. B, she'd try and do a shit on you. And C, she'd prob- tr- probably try and bite you. So these guys... If they like you, they just curl around you. Yeah, pretty much. So oh. in the wild, they will defend themselves violently if necessary. But you remember, if you see a snake in the wild, you always leave it alone. Do you just do you have to stand still and, so, and just wait for it to go around you, or yep, you run? Snakes work on movement. So if you keep still, let this animal move on. Ah, where are you going, little girl? She's heavy. So if you let this, if you keep still, let this animal move on, you'll be fine. Okay, yeah, because I've seen a couple in the wild before and I just did that and they just kept, went past. And it was hard to stand there because you think, I just want to run. I just want to get the hell out of here. Well, that's that's your first inti- instinct, isn't it? But at the end of the day, I mean, it's not just with snakes, it's with sharks, with the crocodiles, all that using your common sense. Yeah. You know? Okay, what do you all got? Right, okay. You've got a lot of animals here. We could be here forever. All right. How many more you got? I've got one more to go. Oh, one more to go. Okay, cool. Bring, bring this thing out. How do you get that back in the bag? I don't think it wants to get in the bag. I oh, know it's fine. They don't, it's like they don't mind going in the big sack. How much so, longer? How long will you leave them in there for? Oh, another hour, and we'll go back home. So basically, um, yes, yeah, Steve Irwin was one of my um, was was I don't know if he used the word hero, but he was one of the people that really could point me in the right direction. Yeah. And one of my things that I always wanted to do is I always wanted to sit down with him and have a conversation, but I never got that chance. And what would you have said to him? I said, you know, look, I, I don't know. I mm. honestly don't know. Ask for his advice because you want to hear a TV you know, show. I would have, I would have asked for his advice. How do crocodiles work here? What's it like in the breeding season? What's it like when they, when it's cooler? You know, just how, how do you, you know, sneak up on a crocodile and you know, yeah, different ways to. I never got that. Just, just the techniques to dealing with crocs. I did get to meet uh, Steve Owen's dad. Lovely, lovely guy. Bob. Bob. No, Bob. Bob. Yeah. Yeah, and he's got Steve's son's called Bob as well, isn't he? Beautiful guy. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. So what what happened with um, Australia Zoo? How come you ended up leaving there? I uh, I was vol- I was only volunteering there for a month. How old were you? Oh, I think I was eighteen. And you know what you like at that age? You, you're pretty. Are you, you a little bit green? Yeah. Oh, you, so you never worked with crocodiles until you went there? No, no, never. Right. Okay. So. Um, but then I, after that, I went to the Australian Reptile Park. I was there for about 18 months. Then I went to, oh God, where'd I go after that? I went to Hamilton Island Fauna well, why, Park. Why did you leave Australia Zoo? You think you'd stay there? That's oh, I was just a volunteer there. I only lasted there four weeks. And when you've done your four, four week stint, um, thanks very much. See you later. So um, and Steve Owen didn't like me all that much. So. Uh, who? Steve Owen didn't like Steve me all that much. Steve or no, Terry? No, no. Or? Uh, Steve and Terry, I don't think they liked me Why? Because, you know, when you're 18, you want to prove yourself. You want to prove yourself to the world. Oh, you're a bit gung-ho, were you? And I was a little bit gung-ho. Oh, okay. So, uh, oops. Maybe sorry. They saw, maybe they saw his competition. So, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, hey, so, look at you go. You know, have you're you ever you're met, living it on with his legacy. Have you ever met your idol? Yeah. Or someone that you were a massive fan of and made a complete and utter ass out of yourself? Absolutely. Who was that? I made a career of it. Who was that? Oh, many people. Uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses, the Chili Peppers. In this in this industry, you you have to start off as a volunteer. You're not going to just bang, go in there, get paid. That's it. You have to volunteer. So uh, at that at that stage, um, yeah, I was just a little bit gung ho, unexperienced. So which is how it is, unfortunately. It's a so you deserve getting kicked the hell out of, <laughs> out of there because you're a bit over the top. No, I wasn't over the top. I was just naive. Yeah. You know what it's like when you're 18. You yeah. just Oh, you you were just excited and passionate. Yeah, yeah, and, no, you exactly. know, it's, this is the line of work that you wanted to But don't to, get it wrong, great experience. Yeah. And what is your last finale that you last have right finale. now? Last well, finale. How about we save the big stuff to last, shall we? Okay. Oh, you've got another one. Is this the big, is this the big last finale or do you have big something? Big last finale. Now, 
Oh, this is this is a uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Acast, you're probably wondering what the hell is going on. Well, there's a big metal box, and he's pulling out a crocodile. Wow! He absolutely settled here in a settled landing boy. Look Don't at freak that. Out Look at those little snappers. Mm, they're beautiful. Oh, so this wow. is an estuarine. Yeah, mate, you can hold it. This is an estuarine saltwater crocodile, okay? So what I'll do is you've got the poo end. I, I, okay. You've got the shitty end. Okay. Do I have to hold this really tight? No, open hand. Open hand. Yeah. So you've got the shitty end, I've got the body end. So this so, is an estuarine saltwater okay. crocodile. Cool. One of the biggest things I really like about teaching people about crocodiles is, yeah, sure, you know what, crocodiles are dangerous, but they're not as dangerous as other animals. More bees, horses and dogs have killed people every year than saltwater crocodile. Usually in Australia, we have two fatalities every year, and that's boiled, boiled down to ignorance and stupidity. People make mistakes, but so do crocodiles. Mm. So another thing that I'll tell people too, we've all heard of the Melbourne Cup. When the Melbourne Cup's going, and if someone is bucked off by a horse... Do they kill that horse? No, of course not. When someone goes swimming in crocodile um, waters and someone dies with a crocodile, it's the first thing they do, put a bullet between the crocodile's eyes. They hunt the crocodile yeah. down and kill it. So when someone dies, I mean, if you go up to Kakadu, there's a sign saying, do not swim, estuarine and saltwater crocodile, three things are going to happen. Mm. Okay, first off, you're going to die. Second thing, Parks and Wildlife Service comes along until they kill seven, eight, nine, ten crocodiles until they find the one. They never find the one. Third thing, the media jumps on board. The media says killer croc strikes again. Well, really, with all due respect, <coughs> should be idiots wins with crocodiles and dies. Mm. Okay, so it was never, ever the animal's fault. It's our fault. Mm. I mean, these guys have been around for 250 million years. They're surviving up till now. Now, man's got this attitude, we're the apex predator, we're in charge. Every now and then, someone makes a bit of a silly mistake, and these guys go, well, hang on a sec. You want to... Oh, 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 hey, crap. Hey. oh crap. Oh, crap. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> every right. come on, settle down. Come settle on, down, settle, settle down, 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 little girl. And every now and then, Boy. someone makes a bit of a mistake. I'll just, I'll just cover his eyes for a sec. Oh, okay, because he's, he's freaking out. Okay. Every now and then, someone makes a bit of a mistake where crocodiles go. Well, Mother Nature goes, "You're not the apex predator. I am." So this is where you're in their home. You're in their, you're in their environment. You've got to respect their rules. Mm. I remember the first time I ever saw a crocodile is uh, went to Darwin. Went up to Darwin late one night. We went up to a place called Shady Camp. Well, sorry, we got off the airport first, and I said, I want to see a croc. I want to see a croc. So we went up to a place called Shady Camp. Mm. Shady Camp's one of the biggest places in the territory for crocodiles. Four and a half metre croc straight in the bank. And it was Whoa. just gr some great shots, mate. Have, have you ever been um, out of uh, the coast of Western Australia, the Buccaneer Archipelago? No, no, uh, I haven't. There's like about to... a thousand islands along the coast there. I've been there twice, and just on a fishing trip. And you'd get these huge crocodiles just, whoa. He's opening his mouth. Oh, my God. Is he, is he want to bite me? Or no, what? no, not at all. Why is he doing that? Why is he, uh, are you doing that? I'm doing that, yeah. Oh, okay. So is this where you want to put my head in there? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm not putting my hand in there. You ever put your hand in there? You know, you see those Thai shows where that guy oh, kept, kept putting his hand in the crocodile's the mouth and then that guy that. lost his arm. Now, see these teeth? You and I have two teeth throughout our lifetime, our baby mm. teeth and our adult teeth. These guys, through a hatchling until 90 years of age, will grow around about 3,000 teeth. You have one stomach. These guys have two stomachs. This is why they have evolved for 250 million years. Now, with these two stomachs, the first part of the stomach, with these big boy crocs, they'll have... Small little stones in there. This will break down all the bits of bone. Mm. Crocodiles are carnivores. Crocodiles will eat other crocodiles. Crocodiles' bone are really, really hard and compact. Okay? So this will break down all the bone. And the oh, second like that. His eyes and the second part of the... Hey, oh, so. you fucker. <laughs> you fucker. I'm evil. Oh, don't let him, let him close his mouth. Is it he or a she? Ah, uh, this is a boy. And so the second part... <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. I had to do that. So, so the second part of the stomach, it's going to freak out in a minute. So the second part yeah. of the stomach, she'll, this will break down all the fats and enzyme. But believe it or not, crocodiles can't digest hair. So oh, every now and then, really? bleh, they'll bring this hairball up. It's, it's actually kind of gross. Ew. Yeah. You know the one creature that kills more people a year than crocodiles, dogs and sharks? Mos mosquitoes. 
Oh, from Ross River Fever. Yeah, yeah they're worried about that in Queensland at the yeah. moment because there's a, a, been a hell of a lot more uh, mosquitoes than usual. Yeah, no, it kills thousands of people a year. Yeah. Yeah. And dengue fever as well. But um, so mm. they are beautiful and I certainly don't want to see these guys shot in the wild. But the biggest thing is, I mean, you've got a certain politician at the moment, Bob <coughs> Carter, who wants to go traffic hunting crocs. Now, if we go traffic hunting crocodiles... Who's saying that? You could say his name. There's an election coming up. We want him to lose his seat if he's doing something wrong. Bob Carter. Now... Oh, Bob Carter. Bob Carter, yeah. What's he trying to do? Well, I mean, he wants to go trophy hunting crocs. Biggest problem is if we go... Trophy, trophy hunting crocs. Yeah, if we go trophy hunting crocodiles, then that makes us hypocrites. If we go trophy hunting crocodiles, then we're no better than killing whales in Japan. All right. Yeah. We need crocodiles for our ecosystem because where there's crocodiles, there's great mud crab, great barramundi, and it supports our tourism industry. So it's a win-win. Mm. I don't want to see these guys go down the bottom down like we did in the late seventies. So we we lost a lot of them in the late seventies. Crocodiles we shot through handbags as persons and skins for sport uh, through the twenties to the late nineteen seventies till they were nearly extinct. Now their really? numbers are up. Yes, now their numbers are up. I didn't know that they were almost extinct. But the numbers are still dwindling, dwindling there. You're getting a lot of people up north that are saying crocodiles are in their play proportion. Well, no, they're not. The crocodiles, are, the numbers are still dwindling. There's still a lot of information on where crocodiles can go and can't go. I believe they can go down as far as Coffs Harbour. I think it was in 2010. Coffs Harbour? Yeah. 2010, one or two were spotted inland of Cross Harbour. No. And there's actually a website that will show you where crocodiles have been up and down the east coast oh, regions man. of Australia. Yeah. That's freaking me out. I don't, I don't think and I want to past, see that website. And it's past Ballina. That's incredible. How big does this little fella grow to? So this is an 18-month-old crocodile, and they will grow. this one will grow up to five to eight metres in length. Is your pressure right now? It's about the same as a pit bull. Fully oh, really? grown, yeah. Uh, it, really? uh, yeah. Are pit bull the same size or as a, as a full grown pit bull? Uh, give or take. Yeah, now, right. fully grown, his jaw pressure will be two and a half to three ton per square inch. If my head was to get in his jaws, my head would simply explode on impact. No way. Oh, yeah. Wow. They are a okay. beautiful animal. But I will say, this is what I love about the Australia Zoo, is the research they're doing on crocodiles is bloody brilliant. And I really in what way? Them. What do they do? Just in the research of they tag and dock crocs, they, they're tagging crocs into where they're going, the document where they've been, to where they go, and I think that is incredible. You know, we need more people out like that. We really do. And so what do they do with that kind of research? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I've just noticed I've just noticed on their website the yeah, other day. I guess the main thing would be to figure out uh, like crocodile numbers and, and whether or not it, it's okay to shoot them and farm them if they were... Yeah. You know, because people... Have you ever eaten crocodile? Which one should no, be talking I've, about it in front of your friend? I've never eaten crocodile. No, never. Tastes like chicken, probably. Does it? But you never would because you love them so much. Uh, look, for me to say ban crocodile farms full stop, that would make me a hypocrite because mm. I eat meat. I, I have a leather belt, okay? Do I agree with how they treat crocodiles and crocodile farms? No, absolutely not. Why? How do they treat them? It's pretty crap. In what way? And the one that I saw, well... You'll get a crocodile that will grow to two to three metres in length. Then they'll electrify it. Then it'll, they'll drag it out. They'll put two bullets behind its head. Mm. Then after they put two bullets behind its head, they'll cut it behind the neck. Crocodiles have got a four-chambered heart. Their heart rate will, will drop down to one beat per minute. So they'll still, still be alive. Yeah. So mm. then... Sad. So then they'll hook it up in the tail, put it in the freezer room. Animal's still alive. What? Yep. Oh, man. So... That is messed up. Like I was saying, I don't agree with crocodile farms, but I can't say burn them because, hey, I eat meat. How big oh, is this going to be? Is it this will eventually grow to five to eight metres in length. Oh, my God. Well, where are you going to keep it then? You can't bring it around to well, shows Well, in and the stuff. exhibitor world, they have to grow to one point. When they grow 1.25 metres in length, mm. they have, they've got to go. They're too big. Got to go? Yep. Like, go, they go to a the farm. Uh, no, no. You can't release them back in the wild, but they'll go to a farm or a zoo. Why can't you put them in the wild? Hopefully you go to a, a, a zoo, mate. Because they're a captive animal. You can't put a captive animal in the wild because it'll end up being eaten by oh, other animals. Just the other ones go, or hey, then, you're easy you, prey. Or then you have to go down the road of diseases too. They could be bringing diseases to other animals. So, oh, hey, settle down. Wow. Well, travelling Bushman, where are you travelling to now? You got any shows coming up? I'm flat out for the next two weeks with the Easter break coming up next next month. Hello to Maury and Narabri. I'll be coming to you soon. So I'll be coming up to Moray now right soon, but I go here, there, and everywhere. In one year, I'll probably do about 80,000 kilometres. Yeah, wow. So if That's you get a, a chance, um, like and follow Travelling Bushman on my Facebook page. I'd really appreciate your support. And if you're looking for a show, 
look up Crocodile Encounters because this is a company that I work for. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of education at work and we're working very, very hard and trying to send that, po- and that positive message. Yep. Thank you, Mark Jackowitz. Not a problem, mate. Then, Not a problem. And what's your uh, Instagram places people can find you? I mean, you're, you're on Facebook and Instagram. Is it uh, Travelling Bushman? Travelling Bushman, yep. And uh, Crocodile Encounters as well. If people want to book you, just send them in a little inbox message. Thank you so much for being on the show. We finally got to do it. You've taken your hand off his neck. Quick, put it back there just in case he snaps at me. No, I didn't care. Yeah, with with Crocs too, I don't like to tape their mouth because I believe it doesn't promote a very good image on the animal. Mm. Um, Thank you so much for having me in. Man, I'm so glad that we finally got to do this. Yeah, yeah. And that you you lived through your bite. I lived through my bike accident and here we are. (laughs) Maybe we'll make a show. That'd be good. I think we just did. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, everyone. A picture sound. Thank you, Mark Jackowitz, the traveling bushman. (laughs) 